Hi everybody, today the 1.07 Days to Die just released, so I'm going to show you how to optimize your console depending on if you have an Xbox Series X or a PS5 and after that we will look at the setting inside of the game. So first of all, let's go with the settings of the Xbox, what I recommend, go to your general uh, TV display and option. So over there, resolution, make sure that you're re using your proper resolution if you have a 4K monitor uh, or uh, a TV. Let's go with this. If you want to run your 1440p, really important, play native. So if your monitor is 1440p, go with 1440p. You will have the best image quality. Make sure also that you're using the maximum frame rate allowed to your uh, monitor or TV. For 4K 120Hz, you need the HDMI 2.1 cable. Also, you need a TV or monitor that is compatible too. Uh, I really like this option on the Xbox. You just click 4K TV detail. So you will see right now with the current uh, monitor or TV and your cable, what you can, what can you run? So you will have some uh, information over there. Uh, really important, calibrate your TV, calibrate also your HDR. Super important to have the proper image. What I also I recommend, make sure that you allow your auto latency mode over there. Make sure that you allow also your 4K if you have a 4K monitor. HDR10 also. Not a huge fan of the Dolby Vision for gaming. It's sometimes they just convert the signal and the game looks very bad. So I recommend to go HDR10. And also auto HDR if you're playing a game that is not compatible with HDR. One more step is the video fidelity. Uh, this one, uh, if your monitor or TV is compatible with 10 bits, super important to run 10 bits. It will be a lot better for your color. Also, if you're running HDR, it's it's a lot better. Uh, so you need it. Uh, so just maybe Google your monitor or your TV if you don't know if it's compatible or not. By default, it will be at 8 bit, but normally. Uh, you can run 10 bit if you have, I don't know, a LG C3, C4, C2, or you have like a, a no LED monitor. So normally you can easily run the 10 bit. So this is pretty much it for the Xbox uh, parameter. So now let's go to the PS5. So now for the PS5 parameter, we're going to go to settings. We're going to go to screen and video. So go to video output. In the current video, you can see right now what you're currently on. So first of all, resolution. Make sure that you're using the resolution that you want to use. So for example, if it's always 4K, definitely choose your 4K. If you just want automatic, go for it. I know some people have issue with the 1440p on some monitors. So sometimes you have to force it out. So select this if you need it. Not a huge fan of VR, honestly. The refresh rate, uh, the variable, sorry, refresh rate. Sometimes it's causing a lot of issues, stuttering and stuff like that. So I deactivate it. My uh, 120 Hz is at automatic. This is the way to activate it. Super important to understand that you need an HDMI 2.1. And also you need a monitor or TV that is compatible. All M go with automatic. Video transfer rate also automatic. If you want to capture your game and you're struggling, you don't understand why you have a black image, probably because your uh, capture card is too old, so you need to compress a little bit your signal. Go with minus two and it will work. I know it worked with the HD60S from Elgato, an old capture card. HDR, I always run, always on. Make sure that you calibrate also your HDR on your PS5, depending on your monitor or TV. Deep color output, you will need to run this one at automatic if you want the HDR to run. And the RGB range, go with automatic. Another thing that I recommend is the save data and game app setting. Go to your game preset. And I like to always put my performance mode at on. So depending on the game, the resolution will change for sure uh, because it's 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 a dynamic resolution. And sometimes you will get your 60 FPS. Sometimes you will have your 120 FPS depending on the game that you're playing. So this is pretty much it. So now let's go inside of the game. So now inside of the game, so the game uh, can run easily at 60 FPS. In some city, you will see that you're gonna drop sometimes to 40 FPS, but uh, honestly, it's not that bad. It's running well. But the thing is in the uh, option of the game, you don't have a lot of option as you can see. So you have your field of view. This one can change your FPS. Not when you will start the game, honestly, you will not see a big difference. By default, it's at 65. But when you are in the big cities and stuff like that, don't go too crazy with your FOV. You're gonna lose too much FPS. The last one is your motion blur. Honestly, the game is running at 60, so you don't really need your motion blur. Uh, the game is too blurry when you're moving. It's pretty an intense motion blur in this game. So I really recommend to deactivate it and you will have a proper uh, um, image quality. So right now, as you can see, I'm running this 65. 
it's too zoom for me so i like to play at 85 but depending where you are you can definitely change it if you feel that your frame rate is dropping too low so that's pretty much it guys for my seven days to die guide the 1.04 console if you have any questions just comment in the youtube section and i will try to help you the best that i can and don't forget to subscribe to the channel peace